We returned from hate week to discuss my personal favorite territorial cup moments on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. And, of course, a shout-out to my everydayers who are here every day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrads36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Fix. Go to pricefix.com slash locked on college and use the promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Fix Daily Fantasy Sports made easy. Welcome back to Hate Week, ladies and gentlemen. As I said yesterday, the entirety of this week is going to be dedicated to Hate Week. It is the duel in the desert on Saturday, ASU. Is hosting U of A. This has been a storied rivalry that goes back to 1899. It is the oldest cup series in college football. It is an unbelievably competitive series. One that has seen so many back and forths and so many great moments, both for Arizona State and for the team down south. It's... It's the game that you look forward to every year. It's the one that you measure your your season, whether or not it was successful or not. Like this was this was the the game of every year. You could have gone one and eleven, but if you won this game, your season was a success. That's all that we care about here in the valley. Now, is that the same for coaching staff and whatnot? No, of course not. They want to win every game, but for the fans. And people like me, alumni, generations that have been passed down, legacy kids, winning this game is all that matters for some of us. And in this in this historic rivalry, we've had the ups and downs. We've had a lot of great moments. And that's what we're here to talk about today is some of the great moments. I'm going to start it with this. I want you to leave your favorite moments that you have witnessed in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. The moments that I have here are the ones that I have gotten to witness. Keep in mind, this is all going to be really recent. I didn't really care about football until about 2009. So a lot of recency with these moments, but even otherwise, you know, I would have been growing up in the 2000s. I'm a 1995 baby, so I didn't get to witness the famous Keith pool, the, the pose. I didn't get to witness, uh, John Jefferson's the catch. I, I didn't get to witness some of those. So these moments are what I have gotten to witness myself. I've got my top three and then a couple of honorable mentions. We'll go ahead and start with the honorable mentions. We'll discuss the rest as the podcast goes along. First honorable mention is got to be the DJ Taylor kick return touchdown in the 2020 game. In case you forgot what happened in 2020, Arizona State uh, hanged up a 70-7 to win in Tucson. I find this so funny, too, because I, I've i seen comments from U of A fans that are like, ooh, it was, it was a COVID year, and you guys only won two games that year, and this, that, and the other. Sounds like somebody lost 70 to 7 and they're upset about it. Oh, and speaking of which, hey there, Wildcat fans. I know you're in my comments. You always check out my videos. I don't know why. So, howdy. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy this, this episode. But back to the point at hand, 2020 was off to a hell of a start when DJ Taylor returned the opening kickoff 100 yards for a touchdown. It felt like that moment. As soon as it happened, you had a feeling that things were going to get really ugly really, really fast. And that's exactly what happened. 
Jaden Daniels was tearing them apart. Chip Trianum, Rashad White, everyone was going to town in that game. The defense played really well. There's a couple other moments that happened throughout the game. One more moment that I'm going to talk about a little later on in the podcast. But there's been all sorts of great moments throughout the history of this rivalry. But to me, one of the biggest standout games has to be 70 to 7. I look back at 70 to 7, and it's like that's the epitome of this rivalry because it like Arizona State could have let off the gas at any time, and they just didn't. They poured it on. And the moment you had this kick return touchdown, you felt like something special was going to happen. DJ Taylor, for all intents and purposes, was a very frustrating player at Arizona State, very inconsistent. He was someone that could break a big one at any given time, but then it also felt like it was just really frustrating to watch him take kicks out that he just had no business taking out. This was absolutely the best moment of his career. It's a moment that I will always remember. It's a moment a lot of people remember. My other honorable mention here, I'm going to have the Jalen Conyers poster from last year. This is actually the only play that I have in my top five here that I do not have as a moment in a victory. ASU lost this game last year, 38-35. It was just a total mess of a game, very back and forth. Uh, You're curious what would happen if we just had an actual stable coach because Sean Aguano was given the keys to this team as an interim and he did the best that he could. But you imagine what could have happened if you had that stability, whatever. I'm not here to make excuses. Things happen. But in this game, you had a very memorable touchdown from Jalen Conyers. It came um, late in the third quarter. It was it was a very crucial score. What I love about it especially was this play came after on the sidelines. Sparky and Wilbur were getting into it, and Sparky just gave him one of the cleanest, I think it was a right hook that I've ever seen in my life, I mean, he just absolutely demolished Wilbur. That that mascot head was spinning. Sparky got him so bad. And then the same time, Conyers goes up for this football, and he high points it, which is something he's very good at as a 6'4 tight end, and just out muscles two different defenders. It was just a poster. Like, it's one of those, like, I would get a fat head and just put it on my on the wall in my office if I were able to find it. That is one of the best plays that I've ever seen. It was it was so much fun to watch, even up in the booth in the in the media press box. Like it took all of me to not get really excited. I I had the little soft golf clap to myself. I did a little let's go. But you know, I can only imagine how the fans must have felt when they saw Jalen Conyers go up for that ball. Even in a loss to me, that was a very memorable moment in the Territorial Cup series. I know that Obviously, it would have felt a lot sweeter had we been able to get the victory. But nonetheless, I felt like that was probably the biggest win to take out of that game for the Sun Devils. I want to talk to all my good friends out there and listeners who have a small business. You know, these days, new potential hires can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. And you want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. Well, that's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You can do this so, so quickly. You do it in minutes, and once you do, add the add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and hire. And I'm sure you know, as a small business owner, Having that right team member can have a positive and measurable impact on your business. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Wherever you're getting your podcast, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. You also want to check out on YouTube. We have launched our first ever national sports 24 seven streaming service on YouTube. Locked on sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top stories of the day. 
with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, whatever. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. I myself am subscribed. I know when I work my late shifts, that's something that I tune into. I definitely encourage you guys to check it out. Let's go ahead and get back into my top moments from the from the recency that I have gotten to see from the Territorial Cup. Once again, friendly reminder, these are not moments that I did not get to witness. So no Keith Poole, no John Jefferson, no ultimatum game, none of those. These are moments I got to witness. These are my top three now. We had my two honorable mentions. Now we go into my top three. The first one is the Robert Nelson interception in 2012. Setting the stage for you. ASU was playing U of A really, really close in this game. It was very much a back and forth game. This was one of the classic games with those old black helmets and the uh, the maroon numbers and everything. It was a really clean look. Well, U of A is driving down the field and they're trying to mount their comeback so that they can put this game away. This game, by the way, is in Tucson. Very stressful, very, very exciting back and forth. Throw across the middle, gets tipped off of Austin Hill's hands, receiver Austin Hill, falls into the lap of Robert Nelson, who proceeds to run it down the field. He's cutting towards the sideline. He's down inside the five-yard line. They end up reviewing this thing because there was there was a, a speculation that he might have stepped out of bounds. Upon further review, no, he was, he was totally in. No questions here or anything like that. So you end up being able to hold on to that interception. You, you make just a, a hell of a play on it, man. And it leads eventually to the game ceiling touchdown by Michael Eubank. Eubank, excuse me. Michael Eubank runs it in. It was, it was such an important play too. This was part of a fourth quarter comeback that saw 23 unanswered from Arizona State. One of the biggest comebacks in the history of the Duel in the Desert Territorial Cup Series. It was phenomenal. And that Robert Nelson uh, interception was one of the biggest catalysts for that victory. It was one of the earlier moments that I paid attention to. For ASU. Again, I, I didn't really care about football until about 2009. I just grew up and didn't really watch it that much. When I started to really care and get into it, that Robert Nelson interception was one of the ones that really, really, really stood out to me. Going to my number two, I feel like this is going to be smaller for some people. I'm sure some people will wonder why this was in my top three instead of one of the others. And it's Jackson He's touchdown at the end of that 70 to 7 win in 2020 in Tucson. Here's the thing. When I think of this play, I just think of the absolute dominance and domination and beatdown that Arizona State delivered to U of A in this game and down south nonetheless. Arizona State was doing anything and everything that they wanted to do in this game. So much so that Jackson he a walk-on running back was able to get onto the field and score a touchdown. Now, one of the really cool things was Jackson He's jersey actually had his last name in uh, Chinese. So the Chinese lettering and everything was just one of the coolest aesthetics that I've ever seen on a ASU jersey, just a jersey period to have your native language have your uh, have your last name written in your native languages alphabet. That is so, so cool. So he scores that touchdown. Well, not only was it the final score in the 70 to seven uh, victory for ASU, but it made history too. With Jackson, he's touchdown. He became the first ever Chinese born player, not only to carry the ball, but score a touchdown in a college football game. A walk-on kid 
from China comes to Arizona State and is able to score a touchdown. If I'm not mistaken, it was his first career carry, too. And it wasn't like a 50-yard touchdown. It was inside the five-yard line, but he fought for it. Like, if you if you look back on that play, that man was just not going to be denied getting into the end zone. It was it, one of the coolest moments in sports. I feel like even U of A should tip their cap to it. Will they? Who knows? But it was it was a very special moment for for college football. It was a moment that Jackson He and his family are never going to forget. It was a moment that hopefully ASU fans are able to treasure as well. Because I look back at this and it's just so unique what happened in this game. The score was unique. The way ASU handled U of A on the road was unique. You can complain all you want, U of A fans, but it was an absolute beatdown. And Jackson He's touchdown in that game was just so special and so much fun to witness. I really hope that you can put down your pride and admit that. I want to talk to you guys about our friends over at Price Picks as well. Price Picks, the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. And now you can play during basketball season too and pick two or more players over or under on their projected stats. Place your entry. Like I said, with basketball season here, you can do combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league. A league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. An example, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey added a, add a 10 and a half combo for three points made and receptions. If you want to play alongside some of Price Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz, you can. You can find them in the community plays under the promos tab of the app to view some awesome big names in the Price Picks community every week and go up against them. Price Picks offers a reboot policy as well, so your entry stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Price Picks the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. That was the case last Thursday night for Mark Andrews and the Baltimore Ravens. He exited after the first drive, and guess what? Price Picks rebooted him. So do me a favor. If you're looking to have some fun, go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use the promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use the promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. One more time, wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. And also subscribe to the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's top stories throughout every single sport that you can think of. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey. It's covered by our local experts. And it's 24-7. It's, it's totally cool. You're not going to find any other thing like it. So subscribe to the first ever 24-7 streaming channel. You can find it on YouTube. Closing it out with my number one moment in the Territorial Cup series in the duel in the, duel in the desert. This is football-related because if it was not football-related, it would have been Desmond Cambridge Jr.'s more than half-court shot last year down in Tucson to sink number seven U of A. That's undoubtedly my all-time favorite Territorial Cup moment. However, we're going to be sticking with with football here. And one of the coolest moments that I can remember is, in my opinion, one of the more underrated Sun Devils, Jack Jones and his pick six in the 2021 Territorial Cup win. It was a big one. 38-15 was the final. ASU really controlled that game. They were forcing turnovers. They were doing all the little things right. But Will Plummer was trying his best, if that's the most polite way I can put it, to get U of A back into this game. He goes to throw the football. I think it was like a like a comeback route or like a, a curl route or something. 
Jack Jones was all over it. He proceeds to run that bad boy back. 4-6. It was the epitome of the Jack Jones experience at Arizona State, too. That was just what he did. Is he took the football away from you and he made you pay for it. Earlier that year, he had the very famous pitch six where he intercepts the ball. He hands it back to, oh my goodness. I don't even remember who he handed that ball to. Remind me in the comments. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but he was just a playmaker. So in his, in his final game at Sun Devil Stadium, for him to get a pick six off of a U of A quarterback just felt poetic. Like, what a heck of a way to end your career at Arizona State. In my opinion, it was one of those plays that really put him on the map in the draft community. I think a lot of people look back at that play and they're like, yeah, that was that was a pretty big moment for him to really assert himself as one of the more underrated corners in the class. He was just a ball hawk. He was always around the football. And this was just one of the most evident examples of that. Dude's a beast. Dude's a stud. That was probably my favorite moment. Not even because it was like this, this like game saving play, right? It wasn't the Robert Nelson interception that was able to help ASU score those 23 unanswered. It's not like that Jalen Conyers touchdown that was able to keep ASU in the game. The Jack Jones pick six to me was just a dagger in that game. It was an insult to injury for U of A, and it was just a flexing moment of dominance for the Sun Devils, who controlled that series five consecutive years. Last year, ASU lost by three points. They were very close to being able to pull off that win. Better offensive line play probably would have got us there, but coulda, shoulda, woulda. I won't sit here and make excuses. What I will sit here and tell you is we're winning this week. I promise you. But if you guys are enjoying the hate week content, wherever you get your podcasts, hit like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with the content, of course, by following me on Twitter at RickyBrads36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. As always, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll be back again tomorrow to continue hate week. I'll see you then. Till then, you keep it locked right here.